Today, we're gonna be building a fully 3D printed ROV, the CPS-5, which we have designed, by the way. <music> 3D printing aside, what you would normally do is use like a PVC pipe or like a stock waterproof case for a body of an underwater drone. The problem with this, however, is that these components are often not rated for large depths, so they could just crash underwater or just leak, and really, a range of other problems. You can imagine how difficult it is then to make it work with just 3D printing it. Well, we've actually tried that for some time, and it was difficult for a couple of different reasons. Let's suppose that you 3D print a container that you expect to be fully waterproof. In reality, the water will flow through the actual layers in the print to the inside of your container under just a small external water pressure. This underwater drone design, for example, was supposed to be fully waterproof on the inside, meaning that the water was supposed to be kept out by 3D prints only. And well, it never was fully watertight past a couple of meters underwater. Not to mention the problems with putting all of the electronics inside of it and trying to seal the cables going to the motors. Well, that's the end of that. So this is the body of the drone that I'm gonna build in a second. The CPS-5. And yes, making such a design takes months of work. By the way, you can see that the propellers are here, here is the camera, and here are the electronics. Here, the print is not really supposed to be waterproof, but it has an acrylic pipe inside of it. Let's print it first, and I'll show you what I mean. So the body is printed, with a total of about 50 hours of printing time. Back to the acrylic pipe. It looks like this. The idea is to put all of the electronics inside of this acrylic pipe, and then put it inside of the body. Well, then it should be all good and watertight, right? Obviously, you still need to assume that you got some sort of a way to seal the ends of the pipe so that the water does not get in, right? Well, the common solution to this problem is to machine some sort of end caps out of aluminum with like a standard o-ring seal and just put them inside of the pipe, like this one or for example these ones. But there is a problem with this though. We need to power components that are on the drone but outside of your electronics pipe, like motors or lights, for example, with electronics inside the pipe. So we need some sort of a way to guide the cables from the inside of the pipe through the end cap while still keeping the pipe watertight. This is often done by these specialized waterproof cable penetrators. They work well, but they require thick cables and are expensive and we just wanted to use normal people's inexpensive drone cables. So we 3D printed the whole end cup. The 3D prints themselves wouldn't be waterproof of course, so here is the simplified version of our custom solution. You 3D print these two pieces on your 3D printer, pour liquid epoxy resin inside of them, and put them together. Wait for the epoxy to cure, and voila! The epoxy fills all of the gaps in the print, making it waterproof to about 85 meters underwater. Then it's just a matter of putting a correct o-ring seal on it and putting it inside the pipe. So now we have this waterproof container designed that we can put any electronics into. Alright now stop! I'm interrupting this program to let you know that you can actually build this drone yourself with our DIY online course. All of the assembly manuals, schematics, models and our entire knowledge are in there. Everything is on cpsdrone.com. But don't go there just yet, watch the video till the end and then click the link in the description. Ok now, thank you! Once again, for getting the cables out of the pipe, we need to solve a couple of problems. The first solution that we tried is we have designed these kinds of slots in the end cap. You can put cables through them and then cover the entire thing in epoxy, as usual. The problem with this is that if you get any water in the insulation of the cable on the outside, for example if the cable is at all damaged, it will leak through the inside of your cable to the inside of your container if you go deeper than about 30 meters. 
Now, you might be tempted to ask, how do I know that? And the answer is simple. Developing this solution actually took us so much time that we have designed our own pressure chamber that can simulate up to even 85 meters underwater. So the idea is that we uh, take the thing that we want to test, put it inside of the chamber, close it up, then we just need to raise the pressure inside of it and hope that the thing that we are testing doesn't leak. The upside of this is that we can test in our workshop all of the stuff that we do and we don't need to like rent a boat and go to the sea. So again, the water will leak through the inside of the cable to the inside of your pressure pipe if you don't do anything about stopping the water. And this was rather shocking and unexpected to find out. Here you can see the footage of some old end caps that, well, didn't work. This is how we fixed the water leaking through the end caps problem. Before we put the cables in the end cup, each cable has to be stripped of insulation in the middle, soldered, and then guided through the actual end cup. After covering it with epoxy, it, even if the water gets inside of the insulation, no water will leak through the cable because it will stop at the solder point. Of course, experimentally proven. And that's how the finished end cups looks like in real life. So we did something similar with putting the camera inside of the drone. The end caps in the main pipe are not transparent and so the camera can't be in the main tube nor in the water. So we just designed two more camera end caps and used a similar smaller pipe to mount the camera in place in front of the main end caps. Great, so now we have a spot for all of the smart electronics and the camera. Before we take care of the electronics that will control all of this, let's figure out the propulsion system. What components do we actually need outside of the pipe, which allow the drone to move through the water and do everything else that we want it to? For starters, we will need some motors. We picked up these inexpensive low-speed drone motors for vertical propellers, and these a little bit beefier airplane motors for the main thrusters, which make the drone go forward and backward. These motors can work underwater just fine. Corrosion might be a problem after some time, but if you rinse them with fresh water after swimming in the sea, for example, they really should last a long time. We designed these simple propellers for the horizontal thrusters and these more, I guess, interesting looking propellers for the vertical thrusters. One note here, it is crucial to take these propellers and sand them with sandpaper as smooth as you can. We even verified with our homemade thrust meter that sanding gives propellers over two times more thrust compared to not sanding them at all. By the way, going back to the body, the drone has a total of five motors. This makes it so maneuverable that it can move in total of five independent ways. Also, it allows for active self-leveling. The drone figures out what motors to move so that it always stays level. So, after I screwed the propellers to the motors, they were ready to go. For underwater, it is also useful to have some light so that we can swim at night or when the visibility is not amazing. For that, I took regular 5 watt LEDs with heatsink and integrated it with a waterproof lens and a 3D printed part. Then, as usual, covered it in epoxy. Now, these are ready and they will definitely be waterproof to a very large depth. The very last thing that we wanted to integrate outside of the main electronics pipe is a pressure sensor, which allows the drone to read the current depth at all times. It also gives you this awesome automatic depth hold mode, where the drone will always keep its depth fully automatically. That's the sensor. To make it waterproof, we just took the PCB and covered the entire thing in epoxy, using a 3D printed mount as well. The little part sticking out is the actual sensor. Now I have everything needed to assemble the entire drone, except the electronics that will control the whole thing. For this, we also took a lot of time to design very compact electronics. This is the Fusion 360 model of the electronics. For the main computer on the drone, we chose the Raspberry Pi computer. It runs its own system and is great for communication with the computer that you use to control the drone, the one on the surface, and for managing the camera stream. 
For controlling the drone itself, we use a common PixHawk flight controller. It handles all of the control loops, allows the drone to self-level, turns the lights on or off, and everything like that. All of the three main components in the system, meaning the computer on the surface, the Raspberry Pi, which is on the drone, and the PixHawk, which is on the drone as well, run open source software so that anyone can modify it and adapt it to their needs. Disclaimer, because radio signals don't travel that well underwater, the drone needs to be wired and it's unfortunately is as simple as that. Let's assemble it then. This is a power sense module which tells the PixHawk about the current battery voltage and power consumption. Now I am attaching a battery with a super simple circuit which turns the drone on or off when I connect or disconnect the tether. The battery lasts for about one hour or so on a full charge. Obviously this varies with how aggressively you're piloting the drone. I added some drivers for the main light. And the fuse for safety. Now I will attach the last component, which are the electronic speed controllers that can control all of the five motors simultaneously. One more thing that I want to mention, as you can see these electronics are made from parts that you can buy anywhere, or modules you can say. Very little custom electronics involved. It's supposed to be as easy to assemble and modify as possible. Now that the electronics are inside of the actual pipe, we can move on to assembling the rest of the drone. For the assembly, I'm gonna follow the assembly instructions that are available in our online course. The connector for the tether that we are using is a Weipu connector, also treated with epoxy in a 3D printed mount, you know the deal. The entire back section of the drone is assembled. We can start taking pictures now. Oh yes, it's a drone. This starts looking a little more like a drone. I can connect all of the cables now inside the drone using these awesome waterproof heat rings. I will also add some buoyancy foam so that the drone is neutrally buoyant under the water. That's all the drone assembled. I think it really is glorious. Now you just need to hope it works. Some more stuff you will need is the main tether, an ethernet cable with a waterproof connector soldered, the charger, a computer, and we are ready to go swimming. Everything appears to be working. We've connected the tether and everything. And here you can see the live footage from the actual camera. Uh, and surprise, we actually have another drone. Here's a, a red drone, and the footage from the red drone is actually here. So we're just gonna be swimming with two drones.
Okay, one more cool thing that I wanted to mention is that on the bottom of each one of CPS5 drones we have designed a special modular connector. So you can see that the, the, there is nothing here yet and here you can see the electronics pipe. And for example we have a GoPro module that we can attach. But right now we're gonna attach this kind of uh, hook module that will allow us to pick up some weights from the bottom of the pool. Okay, so we've 3D printed these sorts of weights, I guess, uh, that we can just throw into the pool and then have the drone with the hook pick them up. So, let's do that. So what you have seen is what we've been working on for the past four years or so and this is what we came up with and as you might have seen we have an online course in which you can get all of our knowledge from these years and build the drone yourself. We really envisioned this project getting big so uh, selling you the course right now will allow us to get more people in, generally promote the course and finally start a proper community forum also create better ROV designs so that more people can build more drones easier and quicker. Yeah, if you like what we do, please subscribe and uh, go to cpsdrone.com. Cheers. Cheers.